Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the final session of our Expedition Cruise Series. I'm Cindy Horton on behalf of the consultants and the owners at the Travel Group. And tonight we're welcoming Herta uh, a line that many of you have probably not even heard of, but which has one of the longest histories in expedition cruising in Europe. They um, uh, also go to some ports that you've probably never even heard of, never mind visited, and uh, they do a really outstanding job. So I'm here to welcome our business development manager, Jake Rogers, uh, who is going to guide you through their unique and sustainable plans and also talk a little bit about their ships, which is something that's a really big part of their future. I think you're really going to love this evening. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Cindy. OK, so I'll just jump straight in. Uh, as Cindy mentioned, I'm Jake. I'm the Business Development Manager for Western Canada. And today we're going to talk about Hurtigrud and Expeditions. Uh, we do have two sides of our business. We have our Expedition side and our Norwegian Coastal Express. For, for, more, for more information on our coastal product, you can reach out to your agent. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so yeah, Hurtigrud, we are the world leader in expedition travel. I threw this slide in here uh, as we are finding a lot of people in North America are having a difficult time saying our name. So here is a nice and easy acronym. So her to Gruten. It's hard to say, impossible to forget. I love that tagline. So starting off with a little bit of history uh, of her to Gruten. Um, next year, we're going to be 130 years old. We all started with Richard Wyth and his steamboat, the DS Verster Olin, delivering the mail up and down the Norwegian coast back in 1893. He ran from Bergen down in the south, all the way up to Kirkenes in the north in just seven days' time, which is actually where the name Hurtigruden is derived. Hurtigruden is fast route in Norwegian. And today we've grown to be the largest expedition company in the world. So why expedition cruising? Expedition cruising is completely different to anything you have done before. We are taking guests to some of the most inhospitable, remote destinations, but in a safe, comfortable manner. These are typically once-in-a-lifetime experiences. You're in the driving seat of your own adventure, and the best part of it is no one knows what's going to happen next. There's no casinos or Broadway shows on any of our ships. Rather, everything is focused around education and getting to see and experience the destinations we are in. Expedition is about challenges and opportunities, but the most important factor of all is to be flexible. Expect the unexpected. Or as my manager says, experience nature on nature's own terms. So why Hurtigrun? As I mentioned, next year will be 130 years old. So we've been doing this a very, very long time. We have it dialed in. We actually founded Expedition Cruiser with trips to Svalbard back in 1896, just three years after we started as a company. Our small ships are purpose-built for exploration and we go where the others don't. A Hurtigrun and Expedition is a valued packed adventure. I'll go through what's included later in the presentation. But from the moment you step on board, you're part of something special, something different, and truly unique. Herdegrin and Expeditions are about offering those truly authentic experiences, sparking your interest in nature, wildlife, culture, history, and climate change. So where do we go? A lot of people know Herdegrin as the company that does Norway. But as you can see from this map, we do that and so, so much more. We actually go to 30 different countries with 150 unique itineraries. So we have something for everyone and many of those bucket list destinations. Places like Alaska, Antarctica, the Northwest Passage, Iceland, Greenland and Svalbard. And even more than just those cold water destinations, we go to places like Galapagos, where we have a boat all year round, as well as West Africa. We are the industry leader in sustainability. It actually makes up our core values at Hurtigruden and is integrated across all of our operations. Literally everything about Hurtigruden Expedition is done with sustainability in mind and adhering to our commitment to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We are founding members of IACO and members of IATO, which basically means we adhere to a high standard and follow strict rules when operating in both the Arctic and Antarctic regions. We have this thing called beach planes, which seems to be very um, interesting. Some people look at this and go, excuse me, what is a beach clean? Why am I paying all of this money to go and do beach cleans? Obviously you don't have to, but this is something that we have on offer as an experience that, and we find our guests absolutely love it. Traveling with Hurtigruden is traveling with purpose. We wanna have a positive impact on the destinations we visit 
and encouraging guests to get involved and remove rubbish that they may see, we really do find has people with a big, massive smile on their face. Leaving a, be leaving a destination better than when we arrived, guests really do love doing their part. We also have our green stay program. This is where guests can pick and choose when to have their room serviced. Now, I don't get my bed cleaned every day or, or clean my sheets every day, so why do we expect that on vacation? Obviously, you can if you want, but for those that participate in this program and hang that little sign on the front of their cabin, we will donate on their behalf every day that they participate. We will donate to our foundation. Our foundation has three main pillars, the conservation of endangered species, fighting against marine and plastic pollution, and financially supporting global and local projects in the areas we explore. We want our guests of tomorrow to enjoy the same places and experiences we do today. Pertigrin, <coughs> excuse me, Pertigrin vessels are built with new innovative technology that take down CO2 emissions by more than 25% and NOx emissions by more than 80%. We were first to ban single-use plastics and we've been campaigning for years to get rid of heavy fuel. We actually stopped using that toxic fuel back in 2008. Even though it costs a lot more to run our ships, it's much cleaner for the environment. We also have hydrodynamic propellers that reduce the drag as we move through the water, thereby reducing energy and less noise for our wildlife. Even the heat from our engines is utilized, which is used to heat the rooms and even the ship, as well as the hot water in your shower and the heating of our hot tub and pool. We're the first company to bring hybrid electric ships to expedition cruising. This allows us to run our ship's engines at peak performance, meaning at its most clean. Our hybrid ships can also shut down their engines completely and run solely on battery power for about 40 to 50 minutes. So let's take a look at what a Hurtigrin experience is all about. Starting with our fleet, you're given the opportunity to sail on one of our six purpose-built expedition ships ranging from our 90 passenger vessel, the Santa Cruz, which is based in Galapagos all year round, to our Nam uh, and, sorry, <coughs> Amundsen and Nansen with 528 passengers on each. They're actually sister ships. We also have the Maud with 528, the Fram with 250, and the Spitsbergen with 180. So we have ships ranging from all different capacities, providing something and different experiences to many different destinations. There is a variety of staterooms on board, all based on our proud Norwegian heritage. <clears throat> from soft lighting, the warm woolen blankets and the natural timber finish, it really is your home away from home and a place to relax and sleep. I like to say it looks like a fancy Ikea. <laughs> Pretty much is, though I did look at all of the furniture when I was on board last and some of the prices, they're definitely not Ikea prices. That chair alone you can see in that photo is about $3,000. On some of our ships, uh, they uh, actually have um, heated floors in the Amundsen and the Amundsen ships, which is fantastic when you've been out all day and you're a little bit wet from, you know, going exploring in Antarctica and, and it's absolutely bucketing down or whatever it might be. If you sit those jackets on the floor of your bathroom, it's almost like a dryer and they're ready to go the next day. The Norwegian style continues throughout the entire ship, with that bright Scandinavian feel. We have our Explorer Lounge in the top photo just there, where you can grab a nice cold beer and sit back and watch the world go by. We also have a gym and sauna and on some of our ships, heated infinity pools. There is also an interactive science center with cool science equipment and gadgets to play with, as well as specialty areas where we conduct workshops in photography, biology, and lots of other science subjects. There's also a fully stacked library, typically with books on the floor and fauna of the destinations we're in. But one thing's for sure, you're not gonna go bored on a Hurtigruden expedition. All meals are included, as well as an early riser and afternoon treat. House wine, beer and pop are included at lunch and dinner. Though if you want to make it a fully inclusive trip, you can buy the optional drinks package, which is 66 US per person per day if bought in advance, or 50 euros per person per day if purchased on board. Gratuities are not expected, as it's not the Norwegian way to tip, so we pass that on to our guests. Our ships feature three restaurants inspired by obviously Norwegian heritage. Sun with Alna, which is our main dining area, where you can go for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, with breakfast and lunch typically a buffet style, while dinner being like a three-course plated meal. Fredheim is our international street food, where you go for burgers, steaks, waffles, that type of thing. It's like a fancy food truck on board a ship. And Lindstrom. Lindstrom is our fine dining restaurant with strong roots in traditional Norwegian cooking. 
Lindstrom is included for all suite guests, while everyone else may reserve a table for 25 euros per person. And for our Galapagos circumnavigators, we have the bigger restaurant offering a variety of dishes. The heart and soul of a Hurtigruden trip is the expedition team. These people are authors, research scientists, adventurers, and experts in their field with years of experience. They cover everything from marine biology, ornithology, glaciologists, historians, and so much more. Each expedition team member has to go through polar training, expedition training, as well as IATO and AECA training. So you're in very good capable hands. Now, for me, the best part of a Hurtigruden expedition is not just the places we visit, but learning more about those places and the things we have seen. With lectures in the state-of-the-art science centre, guests can learn as much as they want with our goal to have everyone leave our trip as an ambassador for the destinations they have visited. We have a professional photographer on board that can help you with your big, massive bazooka cameras all the way down to your cell phone. Wi-Fi is also included, and we're one of the first uh, cruise lines to actually get Starlink, you know, thanks to Elon Musk, which is great for keeping in contact with friends and family through iMessage, WhatsApp, and social media, and it actually does work. And for guests to aid in ongoing science programs, we have citizen science. This is where passengers can actually aid in the collection of data and research through such programs around the world, like Happy Whale. Happy Whale is where pictures of whales are uploaded, and like a fingerprint, whales can be identified by pictures of their tail. This is important for tracking whales and their populations. While from fellow bird nerds like myself, there is eBird, which is basically a database full of information about every bird possible. And as you can see on this photo here, we have many citizen science programs all around the world that guests can participate in. We also have our science boat. This is a fantastic opportunity to get, <coughs> excuse me, to go that one step further and actually be a part of the collection of the data process, as I mentioned before, using citizen science. Now, these photos I took on my phone on my last trip, which was in Alaska, we were in the Mr. Fjord, but we got to use the underwater drone, as you can see in this photo over here on the left, where we actually dropped it down to 100 metres, trying to find the bottom, and we still couldn't find it, though we saw some really cool jellyfish. Uh, we also got to use the seki dish, seki dish, I can't pronounce it at all, but it's basically this cool little thing that you drop over the side of the boat and where you get to measure uh, basically the photoplankton population where you are. We also collected samples of photoplankton and took them back to the ship where we put them under the microscope for further analysis, as you can see here. Another photo I took using my phone, this is us in the science centre with a guy by the name of Chris Venus, absolutely loves his science, loves photoplankton. But what's funny is when we went out that day, uh, the expedition team and the scientists on board couldn't identify the photoplankton that we collected. So that was actually sent off to universities that they, they work with to identify them. So who knows, we might've just discovered a new species, but we'll find out one day. Uh, gearing up for the adventure, uh, it's important obviously to pack for the destinations you are traveling and note that weather can change on a dime. We provide everyone a Heli Hansen jacket. It's nice, I've actually got like three of them sitting in my cupboard. <laughs> They're fantastic jackets. Um, though we don't give this in the Galapagos, you, you, don't, need a, you don't need a jacket on the equator. Uh, we also uh, give a reusable water bottle, which could be filled at water stations around the ship. And you get to use and loan muck boots, which are important when we are doing water landings, as well as places like Antarctica, where we are um, cleaning your shoes when you're getting on and off. There's also hiking poles for those wanting to use them. And the thing to note with us is boots and jackets are sized on board, making sure you get the correct fit. Our expedition launch is at water level as the hull of the ship folds down, providing easier and safer access to our zodiacs. As you can see in this photo here, we also place expedition team members on the platform who are there to provide what we call the sailor's grip to ensure everyone gets in and out with ease. This is a huge difference between us and many other vessels. Landings and scenic cruising. So once we have everyone in the zodiacs, you've gone down onto the platform, you've gone into the muck room, you put all your gear on, you're in the zodiac, we then send you off for an adventure. Now, depending on where you are or the weather, you might get to do a landing, a scenic cruise, or even an ice cruise. A landing is as it sounds. We are landing the zodiacs and getting off the boat to walk around. While a scenic cruise and an ice cruise, we are cruising around looking at the scenery and on the hunt for wildlife. On the hunt's probably a bad term. On the hunt to try and see and photograph wildlife. Uh, dry landings. So let's take a bit more of a look and an in-depth far view at all what, what landings are about with us. So with our dry landings, this is where we are typically getting in and out of the zodiacs, hopefully dry, 
yes, even if it's raining, it's still considered a dry landing. This is basically, we're just not throwing you off into the water. You're getting in and out, as I mentioned, hopefully dry. Wet landings, I'm not sure if this video is working for everyone, but as you can see here, uh, wet landing is basically where we drive the Zodiac up the beach and guests are getting in and out in a tiny bit of water. Weather permitting, we will use a little stool to make it easier for our guests. But yeah, this is basically what we refer to as a wet landing. Nature landings, a nature landing is when we don't have access to a beach or a dock, whether we use whatever we can to safely get in and out of those Zodiacs. This photo here, I believe it was in Alaska, I think, um, that where they're using the mangroves to get people in and out of the boat. Polar landings, pretty self-explanatory, but this is where guests get that proper Antarctica experience. Getting the opportunity to walk on an ice shelf or snow covered area, which you know, for Canadians is just another day, uh, especially in winter. But you know, for other people that don't get the opportunity, this is once in a lifetime experience. Um, knowing that the expedition team is always there to help you as well. Ice cruising, it's similar to polar landings, but we're cruising around the ice rather than getting off the Zodiac. Now that Zodiac there might look like it's right underneath that iceberg, but I can show you it's a couple of hundred feet away, uh, obviously for safety reasons, as icebergs tend to uh, obviously melt and roll. Uh, scenic cruising, uh, this is where we are taking guests around on our Zodiacs and showing them places from the water. Sometimes after we've finished the landing and on the way back to the boat, we'll do a scenic cruise giving a different perspective of where people have just been. This is a photo, another photo I took while in Alaska. Um, you've seen cruising by ship. I wanted to include this to show to people that you really can still get the same experience as if you were getting off for a landing or going out on a scenic cruise in the Zodiac. If plan A, B, C or D, you know, doesn't work out because of weather or whatever reason, we still offer a pretty authentic and awesome immersive experience that guests get to enjoy those places from the ship. As you can see here, we have a observation deck at the very top and underneath, we also have an observation deck that's enclosed. So if it really is bad weather or really, really windy, people can still be at the very, very front of the ship getting some fantastic photos. Hiking, expedition team members run guided hikes to sites of interest based on different fitness and activity levels. There's lots of places that we go hiking and depending on the destination, these might actually be an optional extra. Following our sustainability efforts, we offer support to the local people and communities we visit, contributing to the local economy and making sure we are having a positive influence on those regions. I know this sounds cheesy, but we say we like to arrive as guests and leave as friends. But by doing that and following that very cheesy line, this allows us to come back to other communities again and again and give our guests real authentic experiences where they get to meet some very interesting people. Now, I love this photo. This is obviously uh, taken in Antarctica and it does describe that everyone in the picture here was listening to the safety brief the night before about keeping a safe distance from, from wildlife, uh, which is in Antarctica is five metres. Uh, so we follow strict rules. Uh, so not, we don't disturb um, you know, nesting sites, uh, the animals themselves, seals, or people don't get injured. Uh, and in Antarctica, as I've mentioned in this photo, uh, we do provide a safety brief the night before. It usually is a good solid hour or so on what to expect, where we're going, uh, and what to, what to do in every situation. So you can review animals in a safe, respectful way. Excursions. Uh, so everywhere we go, you get an included activities as part of your trip. Though in some places, we offer optional excursions. These are third-party local guides and experiences that just cost a little bit extra. We also have on-ship optional extras, including kayaking, paddleboarding, snowshoeing, and camping. Not that I would ever be interested in going camping in Antarctica, but it's there if you'd like to do it. So again, we have optional extras. We're not a fully inclusive trip, though everywhere you go, there is those activities that are included for you. You're always gonna have included activities, but we do give you the option to beef up your trip if you so choose. We currently have Black Friday, uh, which is fantastic. It's 50% off. And that's starting from today all the way through to November 30th. So take advantage of that, reach out to your agent. They are the only ones that have access to this as of now. So if you do want to get some fantastic savings, as I mentioned, 50% off, now's the time to book. We also have our Bring a Mate, which is buy one, get one half off on Alaska and Galapagos. This will end by November 30th. And for those that are interested in group departures, um, group rates are typically around 25% off. So if you do have a group or you have lots of people, um, I don't know, your curling team, your curling club, or whatever it is that you might want to go in a group, you can take advantage of getting a 25% discount 
by getting your group minimum 10 people and you get a complimentary berth every 15, maximum two and one in Galapagos. 25% discount to secure and final payment is 180 days prior. Now I've written there no risk. What I mean by that is even if you don't meet the minimum 10 passages and you might've had four people book, nothing happens, nothing changes. The rates don't go up or anything like that. So there really is a no risk if you wanted to try and get 10 people to go. And even if you don't, you can still aim for the group rate. That's me, Jake, BDM, Western Canada. Thank you so much. And again, here is a list of destinations we visit. Well, thanks very much, Jake. That was excellent. Um, I think I've got Galapagos on my list of things to do. And thanks everybody <laughs> for joining us yet again. Um, um, contact uh, our, uh, your agent or our office if you have any questions. And um, um, Hurdy Gluten has also offered that if, if you do want to book and you book in the next two weeks, um, they'll offer you a 90 euro per person onboard credit. Um, all of the webinars, all four of the webinars will be available on our website um, at www.travelg.com. And uh, that's it for us tonight, I believe. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jake. And reach out to us and let us know if we can help you with anything. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thanks. Bye for now.